Should you use semicolons in your JavaScript code? Switch that V6 for the EV, right around my city. Personally, I don't like using semicolons in JavaScript. And I think one of the reasons why is because I've come from languages where semicolons were required and those languages were generally messier and not as nice as these modern languages that don't need them. When I started programming, I was in Objective-C, where if I wanted to create a string to represent someone's full name, I might write something like this. Oh my God. Did you see GitHub Copilot there? Fantastic. Wish I had this back in the day. So the code looks like that, which is not ideal. But then Swift came along to replace Objective-C in the Apple ecosystem and creating a full name like this, ha, Copilot, looks a lot cleaner for lots of reasons. There's just less going on. It makes a lot of sense. It's very readable. And in Swift, we are discouraged from using semicolons. So part of this transition from ugly, messy code to clean code was ditching the semicolons. So when I'm programming in JavaScript, which is a modern clean language, I like to leave off the semicolons that remind me of classic, nasty, ugly languages. In your code, you have to make your own decision and maybe you work for a company where it's decided for you. But if you choose to not use semicolons, there are a couple of things you should know so that you don't break your code. So I'm gonna show you some examples of when you absolutely need a semicolon in your JavaScript code. And I'll start with a bit of a contrived example, but then show you where it actually appears in real code and can actually mess you up and has messed me up in the past. So I've got a JavaScript file here and let's say I just console log something out. Hello, JavaScript. And then below this, I'm gonna create an array of things. I don't know, just a couple numbers. Uh, and I'm gonna loop through each of those numbers and console log these out. Just like that, some basic code. So if I run this code, we would expect to see hello JavaScript log to the console and then one, two, three log to the console because that's the code I've written. But if I actually run this code, I see that I get type error, cannot read properties of undefined reading three, which is kind of a weird error message, but the solution is to add a semicolon. And the place we add a semicolon is obviously right here at the beginning of the array. And now if I run this script again, I see that output that I originally wanted. Hello, JavaScript one, two, three. And the reason this is happening is because JavaScript is trying to run this all as one line of code. So it ends up trying to run it like this. And this part actually doesn't even matter because it crashes before it even gets to the dot for each part. So basically we have two things here. We have a console log statement and then we have this array of numbers. But JavaScript is not treating this as an array of numbers. It's treating it as that square bracket syntax we use to access a property on an object. And the comma separated values in those square brackets are just treated like comma separated values. And when JavaScript sees comma separated values, it evaluates each of the values and then just returns the last one which is gonna be three. So this kind of simplifies to three. JavaScript will also run this console log function and use the return value of this function, which happens to be undefined in this place. So what ends up getting evaluated and what ends up crashing is we're trying to access three on undefined. So if we run this code, we should get cannot read properties of undefined reading three. If I go back to the original code, it's gonna be very similar if I take away that semicolon where it's saying it cannot read properties of undefined reading three. It's the exact same output. So the solution here is to put the semicolon at the beginning of the line. And the reason it goes at the beginning, because really it could go at the end here, no problem. It could even go in the middle, whatever. But the reason it should go at the beginning is to show anyone that is reading the code that you intended to put the semicolon there. If I put a semicolon right here, it kind of looks like I'm being inconsistent. Like I started using semicolons, then just forgot for the rest of my code. But if I put it at the beginning, then it's very obvious what I'm trying to do here. I don't want to use semicolons, but I realize I need it in this specific case. But when does this actually happen in the real world? It's really unlikely that we're just going to create an array on the fly and loop over it like this. Like real production code doesn't actually look like this. But I run into this sometimes when I'm doing unit testing for my code. So let's just assume I have a really basic function that checks if a number is positive or not. So I'm going to return um, number is greater than zero. Is zero positive? I don't know. In this case, a number has to be greater than zero to be positive. So then I want to run some tests to make sure this function actually works correctly. So I might create the array like this 
and run is positive on each number and assert that this always returns true for these numbers. I wanna be able to test this function on multiple numbers and sometimes it's just easy to create an array of things to test a function on. And in this case, I'm creating an array just like this on the fly, looping over it, and this can lead to issues in JavaScript. So when I'm writing this in my unit tests, I should always put a semicolon first. Now, another common time where you will need a semicolon is when you're using an immediately invoked function expression or iffy, which can look something like this. So we create a function and then we just immediately invoke it. So I could console log, uh, hello. Actually, I'm gonna put world in here. Uh, and if I run this, that works just fine. Uh, and then if up here I console log, hello, what I would expect to happen is the console log logs out hello, then this function gets immediately invoked and we get world, so I should get hello world. And if I run this code, we get console log is not a function, which just seems like a terrible error message, but actually does make a lot of sense if we break it down. So again, what is happening here is JavaScript is trying to run this all as one line. And none of this stuff really matters here. This is the only important part. So if I run this again, I can see that that is what's causing the issue when it's trying to run it as one line. So what's happening here is similar to what happened last time. Uh, console log is being run, it's being evaluated, and we end up getting the return value of the console log function, which is undefined. And then it's trying to run undefined as a function, which is gonna give us the error message, something is not a function. So in this case, if I save this, we'll get undefined is not a function. Before the error message was actually a little bit more explicit. It was saying that this entire bit of code, if I run this again, that entire console log with something in it, this does not evaluate to a function. That's really what the error message should say. When we run this code, the return value of running console log is in fact not a function because it's undefined. So this error message does make sense, but it's kind of weird to read saying that console log is not a function. Again, if we go back to the original code example and I actually want this to work correctly, I just stick a semicolon right here to separate the two statements. And now when I run the code, we should see hello, then world printed out just as I expected. Now, when do we actually deal with immediately invoked function expressions? Before ES6, before we had let and const, these were really good at scoping variables because they were scoped to functions. Uh, since that, we don't need these for variables anymore. But if you are trying to run async await code inside of a function that isn't an asynchronous function, you might just wanna wrap it inside of an immediately invoked function expression. So if I make this an async function, now I could do something like await an Axios request to somewhere or whatever. And the most common place I've seen code like this is in a React app, where people write a use effect statement to run some code when a component first mounts. And a use effect function should not be an asynchronous function. It shouldn't return a promise. So if I wanna run some code in here, I have to put it inside of another function. And if I'm just gonna run that function immediately, it might make sense to use an immediately invoked function expression just like this, just so I can run my asynchronous code, something like this, and then probably set it in some state variable, whatever. So it might end up looking like that. But to make sure that we don't get any errors in here, we should put that semicolon at the beginning. And I have seen other examples online that just seem kind of stupid. Like someone adds two numbers together and then in parentheses adds another set of numbers together and then calls to string on that. And then this fails for similar reasons that we've seen before. It's trying to call this as a function. Uh, so the solution is to put a semicolon here but this just seems like a really stupid example. I can't think of a time where I would ever actually do something like this. Uh, so I've seen this online, but it seems like flexing for the sake of flexing. You know, like when someone says, hey, you can call uh, one dot dot to string, but you can't call one dot to string. Why is that? It's kind of just a flex move to say, I know JavaScript better than you, but it's not really useful but I guess that's really what this entire video has been anyway. If you like this video, please leave a comment and let me know if you want me to make videos on any other topics and please subscribe to my channel so that YouTube starts to like me more. Switch that V6 for the EV, ride around my city. You should come ride with me, yeah.